فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم I always say this brothers and sisters Every single thing that has been made has been made with, a, with an instruction for it. This mobile phone has been made in a particular way. If I take this mobile phone and I put it inside a microwave and I heat it up, it will burn. It will explode. If I throw it inside the bathtub with water in there, it will also explode. It will also stop working. Because the person who made this hasn't allowed it for that. Whereas there's other phones that are out there now where if you put them in water, would it work? Huh? Yeah? Yeah, waterproof. Are you with me? Allah made you in a particular way. Allah made your brain, your brain, in a particular way. Allah made your heart in a particular way. If you go against the way Allah set your brain to be and your heart, sisters and brothers, your brain will, will, will collapse. That's where depression comes from. That's where anxieties come from. That's why a person is sli slicing their wrist. The reason why that sister is depressed, depressed so much, that brother is depressed like that, his, his soul is because his body is yearning for something. His body wants something, is dying for something, is looking for something, and you're not giving it what it needs. I ask you a question, if you don't have enough carbohydrates a day, your protein is not correct, you're not taking the required vitamins, what's going to happen to you in the long run? Exactly, consequences your body is going to face, right? The heart also needs that. The heart needs carbohydrate, it needs vitamin, it needs protein. You know what it is? The Kitab and the Sunnah. That's what it is. The Kitab and the Sunnah is the daily intakes that the person has to have. You know if you don't do it, you will collapse, your, your body will shut down, your system will shut down. That's why you find people in mental hospitals, people talking to themselves, waswas, shaitan possessing so many people. It is that simple, wallah. Look what Allah says. Any man or woman who comes with righteous actions, فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Sorry, man, I'm not sorry, I'm in the car in Oontha or a woman, Falanu Yenna Hayat and Tayiba. Any male or female who comes with righteous actions, Allah says we're going to give them a good life. Belief of Allah, He has Iman and Amal Salah, Iman and righteous actions. What's Allah going to give them? Falanu Yenna Hayat and Tayiba. Pay attention. So much so, sisters and brothers, pay attention to this. That even if his physical body is going through pain, because he nurtured his heart so much, he won't feel this pain anymore. Asiya, when Fir'aun was throwing a rock on her head and she was being killed, what was she, what was she seeing? And what was she doing? She was smiling. And she could see her house in Jannah. Fir'aun is torturing her body. Her body is being tortured. She's going through hardship right now. But why is it that Asi is making it through? The reason is because she gave her heart to Allah. And Allah promised her, Allah reassured her that He's going to make sure that she doesn't suffer from her heart. And that's the true place a person can suffer from. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? You see a brother who looks very, mashallah, healthy, his body parts, his gym, healthy, even phys he's got money. From the out, he looks good. But he's dying from within. Within, within he's dying. What's he doing now? This big man is doing the most silliest things. He's crying, he's weeping, he's sleeping all day. He feels weak. Yeah, look at your look at your arm. Look how big it is. It's big as my thigh. Why are you weak for? Where's your power? Where's your strength? The weakness and the strength is not the body. It's not what lies the heart. This individual has not surrendered, he has not fed, he only fed his body. He only fed himself physically, but he didn't feed himself mentally. He didn't feel, he feed his heart. He didn't give the, the heart and the mind the amount of supplement he needed. So this is what's happening to this big, strong person. He just cannot do anything. He, sisters and brothers, a guy goes to the gym, spends so much time, look at his, mashallah, body parts, physically strong. 
He's picking up the biggest machines and picking up the biggest kgs. Why is it that on Fajr he can't pick up the duvet off himself and go to the masjid? Why? Why can't he pray? Where's the strength? Where's the power? Again, again, it brings us back to the point again. It is the heart. It's the heart, wallahi. And it's there that the person can live from. The sparks, the strength, the, you know, the, 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 the determination. That person can do it. I've seen so much people who are small, fatigued, you know, weak physically. Like in the kind of things that they have. The ambitions that they have. The drive that they have in life. Ajeeb. Fasting, praying, ibadat. Yeah, where are you getting all of this from? Who's motivating you? And where are you getting? You don't have energy. You never ate all day today. You don't sleep much. Where was pushing you? The heart. His heart is alive. He's driven. He's driven. That subhanAllah, the ulama, they say, the person who has high aspiration, may Allah have mercy upon his body. Because he's going to destroy his body. His body is going to suffer because of his heart. His body is going to feel pain because this person's aspiration is going to take him through everything. So my beloved brothers and sisters, this is why you feel that you're suffering, you're depressed, you're talking to yourself, you're antisocial now, you can't hang around with your friends, everything has changed for you. It's because, take a step back, stop using these temporary cures that you think is working for you, medication, slitting your, taking a knife and slitting your th wrist is an only, rather it's increasing yourself in the illness again. It's actually taking you on a long, it's taking you on a wrong route. You're making yourself even more. Instead of shaitan, look what he did, he did to you. He put you in one problem and he's put you into another problem and another problem. And, another, and he will never get, allow you to realize where it really lies, the cure. The cure is simple, as I said. Your shaitan is taken over you. Look at this. <coughs> If a person, before they eat, they say Bismillah. Simple things, Wallahi, nothing big. Before they eat, they, they, they say Bismillah. Before they go into their house, they make the dua. Before they sleep, they make their dua. Who is it that's going to suffer that whole day? Shaitan. When you say Bismillah, who's not going to eat with you? I'm asking brothers and sisters a question. Shaitan, right? Is he going to eat with you? He's no longer going to eat with you, right? If he doesn't eat, whose benefit is that in? It's in your benefit because he becomes weak. He doesn't have food. He becomes weak. If he doesn't become, if he becomes weak, who is he not going to be able to misguide? You. Like in your shaitan has got breakfast. He's got, the, he's, he's, he's got breakfast. He's got the starters because you don't say bismillah to any of them. So he's eating the starters with you. He's eating the main, main course meal with you. He's eating even, you know, the, uh, the dessert. He eats, what do you call it, all the milkshakes with you. And guess what? When you go into the house, you just kick the door down and you go into the house and you say, Hi, how is everybody fine? I'm good. And you walk in, Shaitan says the same with you. He says, Hi, everybody. He walks in. He's, he's got the most coziest house. Bed, he's sleeping with you all night. He lives a good life. And guess what? Every energy that he receives from that sleep, from that eating, from that everything, is towards you. He's going to weaken you. So you, yes, you're like, brother, I can't wake up for Fajr. Look how big your shaitan is. Your shaitan is eating so much that he's storing food for his other, other friends. Are you with me, brother? He's, he knows he's got a place to sleep every night. Make your shaitan hungry. Make him not have a sleep. He'll be busy with trying to find a place to sleep and food to eat. And he becomes weak. And once he becomes weak, that is your opportunity to seize to control yourself, to get everything intact. It's that simple, brothers and sisters. Those are the simple things people are leaving behind. No wonder you can't wake up for Fajr. No wonder you can't do no ta'at and obedience. Because your shaitan has gone strong. And he's going to depress you for the rest of your life. He doesn't want to see your salvation. He doesn't want to see your happiness. He doesn't want you to see that. And then you get possessed. He goes into you. He lives inside you. You're possessed. You can't even think clear and for yourself. Allah says in the Quran, "Ma yaftahi Allahu lil nasi min rahmatin fala mumsik laha, wa ma yumsik fala mursil lahu min baadi, wa huwa al-azizul hakim." Allah also says, 
وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍّ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُوَ وَإِنْ يُرِدَكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَلَا رَادَّ لِفَضْلِهِ يُصِيبُ بِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وقال تعالى الذي خلقني فهو يهدين والذي هو يطعمني ويسقين وإذا مرضت فهو يشفين وقال تعالى وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون Allah says ما يفتح الله للناس The good that Allah opens for you The good that Allah brings for you من رحمة from his mercy فلا ممسك لها There's no one who can stop that from coming to you Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah, this is the things that they teach you. If Allah wants to bring you good, if Allah wants to bring about some khair for you, there is no one who can come and stop that from you. Wa ma yumsik and anything which Allah withholds from you, fala mursila lahu min ba'di. There's no one who can give it to you. Wa huwa al Aziz al Hakim. So, sisters and brothers, if, if the good can only come from Him and the hardship, can only be repelled by him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then who should, who should you direct your efforts and your begging and your asking from? Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of you wake up at night, qiyamul layl, and ask Allah? Lift your hands up. As much as you ask help from others. You ask other people for help. Advise me, brother. What do you think here? How many times have you actually asked Allah for solutions? Instead of asking anyone, you've actually put your hands up and you only asked Allah before anybody else. Allah, you know, Allah is so sad. He's the final, final solution for us. When we give up, the doctors say, yep, this illness can't be cured. You've taken, we've tried our best. We can't do anything about it. Then the parents go, let's call the shiuks, let's call the Quran reciters, and you know, let's, re let's get people here. But that's when it's too late. So the religion is the last result. Allah is the last result. Why do you think He's going to put you first if you put Him as the last result? You get a headache, you jump. Where's the paracetamol? Give it to me, I've got a headache. SubhanAllah, you take it, it doesn't work. What? Take me to the hospital. 999, the police, uh, the ambulance come. You take it to the hospital. The hospital goes, oh, it's a tumor in your head. What? Tumor. So they do surgery on you. They take the tumor out. The surgery doesn't go right. They're like, okay, nah. The tumor is actually growing again, it's not going to stop. And you're like, Ya Allah. What was, where was he all that at the beginning? That's why when it was small and you thought it was just a normal headache, why didn't you ask him? Maybe you wouldn't have a tumor now. Until now you didn't get it. You only went to him when you gave up. Plus, why is it that you would only run to Allah at times of hardship? Where, was, where were you when, when, when the times of ease was there? When you were healthy? When he, your body parts were intact? When you had everything, where were you then? Do you see my, my brothers? If somebody only comes to you when they're in trouble, but you're like, brother, you, you dismiss me at times of good. You don't even give me salams. You ignore me. Are you with me, brothers? Allah is different from the creation. Allah will still open his doors for you. He's Rahim, very merciful. Even though you didn't come to him all of the times of good. The times of hardship, if you come running to him, with sincerity, he'll still accept it. His doors will open for you. How he's different, he's merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you need to ask yourself, well, why would you do that? Why would you only come to him at the times of hardship? Is, don't you not realize where your problem comes from? Do you not know why you're suffering for? Ask everybody, sit down, ask yourself. I, you, I, you definitely know why you're suffering. You were not righteous and then you started to suffer. You didn't, but rather you followed your desires and that's why you're suffering. <clears throat> القاعدة الرابعة والأربعون قاعدة فوتي فوت قاعدة which is أنهم يعتقدون أهل السنة والجماعة believe أن حقوق الرحمن Allah's rights 
hiyal ghaya. Allah's right is the ultimate goal. Wa amma huququl insani fayatabaul laha. And they believe that the rights of the people is um, is secondary. Allah's rights is the primary rights, the number one rights, the ultimate goal in why you were brought to this earth. Earth. Sisters, wallahi and brothers, pay attention to this point. This will help you a lot. When somebody comes up to you and says to you, why is Allah doing this to me? Think about it. Think about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pay attention to this question. This point is a very powerful point. You never ever deserved anything. For you to think you deserved something is an illness itself. From Allah, you don't deserve anything. You're only getting all of this due to His mercy in the first place. And if He chooses to not give to you, it's His rights. I give an example. If somebody says, Akhi, can I use your phone? I say, no. Am I entitled to say no? Do I have to give it to you? Is there an obligation? It's not. People get upset, right? Why are you getting upset? You're stripping away from me my rights to do what I want. I have the rights to say, no, I don't want to give you my phone. If I do give you my phone, it's out of mercy. No one here deserves to enter Jannah. No one does. The reason is because you can never do enough to attain Jannah. Because if you do Jannah, it would, if you do any righteous action right now, it won't even come close to what He's given you, let alone Jannah. So Allah brought you into this earth. He gave you health, He gave you eyes, He gave you everything. The good that you're going to come with is after He brought you into this earth. Sah? If you do come with it. That good would not be even equal to what He gave you. Jannah and that is an extra point. You can never work towards it. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? So what we've understood is that I have, I have rights on Allah, that He has to do this for me. No, He doesn't. No, He does not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one part of your body, Wallahi, one part of your body today, if I asked you, just brother or sister, can you just give me your one, this finger, this finger? You say, no. Okay, 10,000 pounds. No, 20,000. No, 30,000. No, 40,000. No, 2 million. No, 4 million. 5 million. 10 million. 100 million. You'll know, Akhi, whatever price you say, I'm not going to give you my finger. So you're worth more than any money that a person can mention. True or false? Who gave it to you for free? He gave all of that to you for free. You didn't pay for it, you didn't work for it, you didn't put it. So everything that you do, it can't even pay back that one finger he gave you. He gave you that for free, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, that's why the Prophet he said, he said, That one of you is not going to enter Jannah because of his actions. You're not going to enter Jannah because you worked hard. The Sahaba, they said, Ya Rasulullah, Wala anta Ya Rasulullah, even you, O Messenger of Allah. He said, Wala ana, even me. Illa yatagamadani Allahu bi rahmati min wa fadla. Except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers His mercy onto me. No one is going to earn Jannah like that. No one can, no one can. The Prophet sallallahu told us a hadith, a man who is taken by the face and is dragged on the ground, his face is dragged on the ground from the day he was born. Until the day he died, his face was being dragged on the ground for the sake of Allah. If he comes the day of judgment, he will belittle that action. He will belittle what he went through. He will say, nah, ya Rabbi, I didn't do all this, Allah. He will realize what he came with is nothing. Let's pay attention. From the day he was created and made, was until that day, he was being punished for the sake of Allah. He would have belittled it. Sah? You belittle it. Let alone anything else. Your own mum today, you can't pay back her rights. Everything you do, you can't pay her back. Everything you do. You know why? She gave you this life. Abdullah ibn Abbas, a man came up to him and he said, Ya Ras, uh, Ibn Abbas, I took my mum, I placed her on my shoulder, I done tawaf around the Kaaba seven times, I went around the Kaaba one, two, three, she is on my shoulder, I'm carrying my mum. Hal a date, did I fulfill the rights of hers? He said, it is not even equal to a push from the pushes of the night that she gave birth to you. Just one push. She pushed. 
and all of that which she's done around the Kaaba seven times, and then the Sa'i between the Safa and Marwa, all of that, her one push is more than her, more than you. That's your own mom, human being. Allah is greater than all of that. He gave you everything you have today. You're breathing, you're living, you have this life. So what you now realize, you should realize is that the ibadah that you're coming with is not a favor that you're doing Allah. Wallahi, you're doing a favor for yourself. You're protecting your own bone and the flesh from the hellfire. Wallahi, you're doing yourself a favor. Don't think yourself any minute or any second that I'm worshiping Allah and I'm going to make him happy. And I'm pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this action of mine is going to grow. It's, it's for Allah that he needs this from me. No, he does not need it. Wallah. You're doing yourself a favor. Wallah, you're doing yourself a favor. And you're protecting yourself from... And you know what we find nowadays, brothers? This concept that has creeped amongst the Muslims, which is, what's there in it for me? Huh? Everything, what's there in it for me? This is what they say to you, everything. What's in it there for me? What, what, what am I going to get it from? To the extent that people today will say to you, and it's a belief, it's actually a belief, and I'm going to inshallah quote Shaykh Al-Islam Taymi on this. Even some students of knowledge or dua to propagate this concept, which is, which is that salah that you're praying is exercise. Are you sah? Have you heard that before? When you pray salah, it's good for you, it's exercise, your body parts, your joints, and had a batin, batin, man's Allah bi sultan. The salah was not made obligatory on us, so it's exercise that we exercise through it. Do you, are you with me, brothers and sisters? The reason why they have that concept in their heads is because they want to strip away from the spiritual side of actions of obedience. If salah, the reason why it was legislated is not because there's a benefit in it for you. Are you there? They'll say to you, what's there in it for me? So somebody will say to you, salah, you know what's in it for you? It's a gym for you. So we believe this concept everywhere we go. What's there in it for me? You, am I making sense here? Staying away from pork, what benefit is there in there for you? It's ta'abudi. You worship Allah, you don't know what it is. It's ta'abudi. This concept that the reason why Allah legislated this is there's a maslaha dunyawiya, a worldly benefit in it for me. No, it's not. This is a philosophical observation of everything. That's what the kuffar do. Muslims don't believe that. We don't believe in that. We believe we will worship Allah because we're his slaves. He created us. He brought us into this earth. He has rights over us. I fear him and I hope Jannah from him. I'm not worshipping him so I can get a worldly gain from him. Are you with me brothers and sisters? I don't fast because I want to gain a worldly gain. Like some sisters say, yeah, Ramadan's coming, I can lose weight, a billah. If it comes and it happens like that, it's good, no problem, if it happens. But that's not your objective of why you're fasting for. You're fasting because Allah made it obligatory. You're, missing, you're messing up your intention. Are you with me? So al Sunnah al Jama'ah teach the people that Allah's right is the ultimate goal. And the human's rights is a secondary. Meaning your worldly rights is a secondary thing. That's what Allah says in the Quran. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ Allah also says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْ لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Allah says in the first verse, I did not create jinn or ins except to what? Except to worship me. The reason why I, I created the women, uh, sorry, the men and the women and the jinn and the ins is to what? Worship me. That's why you were created for. That's the old. What's the reason you're in this world? Brother, this is I'm asking a question. Why are you in this world for? Yeah? Are you in this world for? Worship. Okay. You know what some people done? And this is where it all went wrong. 
There are some people's ideology. This is the ideology of a group called Ikhwan al-Muslimin. Ikhwan al-Muslimin believe the reason why you're in this world is for worldly gain. Do you get my point now? This is a problem now. The maslaha to dunya, your worldly gain, is it the primary or is it secondary? What did we just say? Huh? Pay attention, it's a very critical situation now. The reason why you're in this world, what's the primary reason? Yeah? The worship of Allah, right? Allah's rights. That's the first primary reason you're in this earth. Food and eating and marriage and children and enjoying yourself. That, is that the primary or is that secondary? Huh? Huh? It's a secondary, right? Are we all together on that? Ikhwan al Muslim, which is a deviated group, what they say is that the reason why you're in this world is what? Maslahatul dunyawiyya, your worldly gain is first. Ibadah is actually a means to gain your worldly gains. Do you, you get the point now? Yes or no? Please pay attention here. This qa'id is very important because it refutes a whole methodology that stands. What do we believe? That you eat, you drink, you marry, all to worship Allah. Sah? The reason why you're marrying is so you can fulfill your desires, so you can focus on Allah's ibadah. This is a stepping stone to ibadah. True or false? You eat for what reason? So you can stand up and pray. Sah? You, uh, you learn how to drive so you can do or be acts of obedience and worship Allah. Sahih. Everything is serving the ibadah. For them it's opposite. The ibadat, the salah, the salm, the hajj is a means to your worldly gains. You're worshipping Allah, you're praying to Allah so you can have an Islamic government. So you can have constitutions. So you can live your lives good. Is that why Salah was made obligatory? Do you get the point now? So what are they going to do then? The ibadah, since it's a means and the ultimate goal is the dunya, what's going to happen? The ibadah can be bent. It can bend. It can be tossed and it can be turned. All to fit the worldly needs. Are we make, am I making sense? That's why you find, they will say for example, university loan is permissible. Because the ruling of the Sharia, the hukum of the Sharia, is not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is the people's worldly. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? One of their shuyukhs, he made a fatwa. They said to him, they asked him, men and women swim together in, 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 in swimming pools. The men and the women are swimming in the swimming pool together in France. And problems are coming. What do you think, Sheikh? He said it's permissible. What, Sheikh? He's a big Sheikh. He's, big. He's, a, he's the Mufti of Ikhwan al-Muslimin. He's their Mufti. He's their fat Mufti. He lives in Qatar. So they asked him this. He said, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Take, take a free mix. You know what's his reason? Again, it's not a thick question he got wrong. Don't think that. It's springing from the concept I already mentioned to you, sisters and brothers. Which is, he believes the halal and the haram has to serve the people's needs. So now that they're free mixing and they need to study at universities, this ruling of whether it's halal and haram has to bend in, in, in the needs of the people. It has to bend that way. Because the dunya is the ultimate goal. The religion and the ibadah is a means to the dunya. Am I making sense? So that's why you find rulings go, rulings are bent. So when, when people say, Ya khi, this fatwa is ikhwani fatwa, don't think, to him, don't think to yourself, it's just a fifth issue. Why are you making it into a big situation? Are you there? It's not just a fiqh issue. It's the concept of where this fiqh issue is coming from. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? And there's statements that are clear. I wrote, subhanAllah, my, myself, I wrote 18, 18 figureheads of Ikhwan Muslimin from their books. I read their books inside out. Inside out. 18 figureheads of what they said regarding this issue. You know what they believe La ilaha Allah means? What do you say? Well, when you say La ilaha, what, what did you say La ilaha means? What's your definition of La ilaha? Your definition of La ilaha illallah means that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. Ibadah is for Allah alone. True or false? Isn't that your definition of La ilaha Allah? 
Because you believe you, the salvation, your, the, your reason of this world is ibadah, right? So you say, La ilaha illallah means La ilaha illallah illallah. For them, that's not. La ilaha illallah for them means there is no leader except Allah. You now think to yourself, that's a good statement, isn't that right? But leader for them is why they would direct their efforts and not ibadah. Salah, siyam, psalm, Allah being worshipped alone, they won't talk about that. Their concept is towards the politics and the leadership. Sah? Is that what La ilaha illallah means? Is that what it refers to? No, it doesn't. So truly understand the underlining problem. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Just because two people said the same thing doesn't mean both of them take the same ruling. Sah? Sah? Or two people did the same thing, they don't take the same ruling. I'll give you an example. If your friend comes up to you and says to you, Akhi, I need to talk to this person, can you leave? Are you going to take it, are you going to, take it to heart? It's your friend, right? Okay, because the underlying. What about if your enemy comes and says, hey, I'm going to talk to this person, can you leave? What are you going to happen? What's going to happen? Huh? You get offended, man, what are you saying? But he can say, oh, listen, your friend said that, you didn't get angry, why are you getting angry with me? It's a context, right? Everything has a context. Two statements may come from two people. It's the context of how it came. When these people make that mistake, and when a person of the Sunnah makes that mistake, it's not the same. This person of the Sunnah, his foundation is correct. He just went wrong on this particular issue. Forgiven. He's forgiven for it. Their, on the other hand, foundation that they're picking up from, the base in which they're basing their argument, is a very, very filthy base. I hope you understand. I hope you understand this. Wallahi, this is the reality. This is the reality. They don't believe. They don't believe that... The ultimate goal of why you're in this world is what? Is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They believe the ultimate reason why you're here is mere maslaha. Maslaha to dunyawiyah. Worldly gain. Worldly gain. Ibadah is a means. We believe ibadah is an ultimate goal. It's the goal of why you're here. They believe no, it's a means. The ultimate goal is maslaha to dunyawiyah. This is a fundamental problem now. Shaykh al-Islam Taymi, look what he said. He said, يَقُولُ بَعْضُ الْفَلَاسِفَةِ إِنَّ الْمَقْصُودَ بِالْدِّينِ مُجَرَّدُ الْمَصْلَحَةِ الدُّنْيَوِيَّةِ وَلَيْسَ الْمَقْصُودُ بِالْدِّينِ الْحَقِّ مُجَرَّدِ الْمَصْلَحَةِ الدُّنْيَوِيَّةِ مِنْ إِقَامَةِ الْعَدِّ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ فِي الْأُمُورِ الدُّنْيَوِيَّةِ كَمَا يَقُولُ الطَّوَائِفُ مِنَ الْمُتَفَلْسِفَةِ فِي مَقْصُودِ نَوَامِيسٍ وَالنُّبُوَاتِ أَنَّ مُرَادِ مُجَرَّدْ وَضْعُ مَا يَحْتَاجُ إِلَيْهِ مَعَاشٍ فِي الدُّنْيَا مِنَ الْقَانُونِ الْعَدْلِيِّ الَّذِي يَنْتَظِمُ بِهِ مَعَاشُهُمْ لَكِنْ هَذَا قَدْ يَكُونُ الْمَقْصُودُ فِي أَدْيَانِ مَنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ They believe that the religion came to establish justice, constitutions, governments. That's the ultimate goal of what Islam is about. Islam is about leadership, government, constitutions. That's why we're in this world. The whole reason we're praying Salah, we're fasting, we're bringing, is to unite us under one leader. That's the ultimate goal. Is that the ultimate goal? Yeah? It sounds very, very convincing, right? Yeah? It sounds very convincing. Nah, that's not the ultimate goal. Rather, the reason why we're in this world is to pray Salah. That's why Hizb al if you sit with them today, they don't ever talk about Salah, Siyam, Saum, Hajj. Ask them. They'll say, no, 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 no. There's no Khilafah. Rather, they believe some of the religious rulings are abrogated. So not abrogated, uplifted now, because there's no Islamic leader. It can't be implemented anymore. Sah? Like issues of zakat and other things, they believe it can't be implemented, because there's no Muslim leader to control all of that. Do you believe that? Does anyone believe that? So this is a fundamental issue. Many problems come from. Ask Allah wa ta'ala, He guides us to the truth. I'll conclude there, inshaAllah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me, shaitan, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallah wa bihamdi, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.